anyway, I want to express my extreme gratitude to Tarana for reaching out for me, but I know there are a number of other um, leaders and teachers that are here, and, and I want to just address those. Uh, Mabana, Noor, uh, Latifa Noor, I saw you speak, Hadi, Michael, I know you a bit, Hayat, and Sikander. I don't know if you're all here, but thank you so much for your taking on this responsibility to lead this group and, and to invite me and others into it. And I just, it's such a joy to be here with you. And I'm not sure I've met all of you, but some of you I think I know from way long time ago. Well, I don't know about you, but for me, when I met the teachings of Hazrat and Khan, it was as if he spoke to my, through my heart into my soul. And these teachings have transformed my life. And uh, I just have so much gratitude and love for the teachings. And they've given me the courage to be here with you today. Because, oh my gosh, I know I'm amongst musicians and singers. And uh, yeah. Anyway, if there's anything that I express, I hope it can go right from my heart to yours. Uh, I have, I was telling Nirtana, I think I wrote you this morning, uh, not Nirtana. Uh, Tarana, but maybe Nortana, you were copied in. I had COVID um, in September and uh, it's the long COVID. So I still have problems getting my full breath and uh, my voice is a little compromised, but I will do my very best when we come to singing the zikr. It's beautiful. You know it. If there's anything in my manner or behavior, just mute me and sing loud to yourself. Uh, but I also want to thank um, Pierre Moynadine Clark for being here um, with, from the Fraternity of Light. And I think David Murray, I still see that you're online. And there's probably some of your friends in your Zicker, Zicker Circle from Edmonton, Edmonton, Canada that are here. And thank you all for being here. And I hope that this gives you something that you can carry with you. I wanted to speak. Um, well, I wanted to offer some words of merchants. And there's two thoughts about the um, zikr and the use of language and sound that uh, come from Mershit's teachings. And the first, and I'll read these to you. Um, the first one is from the message papers and Hazard and Icon says this, the great linguist of the day have found that ancient languages still exist still in existence, have some psychological, mystical power in their words. I, I often do this if I'm presenting zikr to people that are maybe not familiar with it, because it's like, why are we saying these funny words? Now back to Mershon. Even to such an extent, if you were to study the words of the zikr, every single word has a certain action on the physical mechanism and on the intuitive centers. And we read that in this paper or heard it read in this paper today. Murshid goes on and says, an ordinary person will only take it as a word that belongs to a certain language, but such words have belonged to mystics. They never belong to any language. The languages have taken them and people have made use of them, expressing different things. However, the mystics have gathered them together like a chemist would collect herbs and drugs and different things in order to make them a medicine. Mystics have collected these words, words of great power and revelation in order to produce desired effects. And so we have this in the Zikr. And then this I wanted to share from the collective interviews that were given during summer school. And these you probably know were interviews that were given to his most senior students. So the Khalifs, the Tariqs, the um, Murshids, the Murshidas, the you know, um, Sheikhs. And these are the words. He begins this paper like this, or this teaching like this. The words of the zikr are la el la ha el allah hu. Now, I've been in a number of zikr circles, even around the world, beautiful opportunity, but I know that this zikr phrase is different 
um, in different parts of the world and in different traditions. But Murshid, as you know, used the word el instead of il. And he, he goes on to say, through the recitation of zikr, God willing, we come to the realization that everything comes from one source and that everything is developing towards one goal. We begin to see that the source and the goal are God. Then the world of variety is no longer variety, but experienced as unity. And experiencing this unity is the deep source of abiding happiness. I want to read a little more, but first, can we do just a short experiment? Let's use the word ill, which sometimes we hear that in the zikr, ill, and just put your hands here and on your solar plexus, all right? And say the word ill, I-L. See what it does to the vibrations in your body. Ill, 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 ill. And now let's use the sound L and see if there's any difference. Does it feel different in your body? L, 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 L. You can work with it on your own. Murshid in this collective interview goes on to give this as an instruction. The most important part is L, the central word. So la elaha el alahu, which has an action and influence upon the solar plexus when rightly done. If rightly done, one will profit in six weeks. Some of you, maybe you've heard Pirvalai a long time ago talk about this. He says, Mershit says, the action strikes the nervous system, which is then put into action. And he says, joy arises, not dependent on outer things. This is a medicine he's giving us. He says it comes from the heart. One can put the hand there and feel the action. Every day for five minutes, say the word L. Then the center is awakened. Inspiration comes. Healing becomes easy. Tuning a person's life becomes easy. Others too can be tuned because on the inner plane, we are connected, Emerson says, like a telephone center station. Then the sound, who? Let's just say that five times. And again, hands on heart and belly around the navel. In the Gita's verse, it says, another word is who. This exercise must be produced from the depth of the bee. It releases the solar plexus from all gases and the center becomes clearer. Intuitive faculties become clear. It takes away all confusion and depression and congestion. He says, do for three minutes. So L for five and um, who for three. He says, the nerves of the solar plexus are very fine. In this physical center is the highest function. It seats the throne of God. So we can use these exercises daily doesn't take a lot of time, but it sounds like the benefits are really great. And who couldn't trust the word of Zikr, of uh, Mershit on Zikr? And so he says further in this Gita, in Zikr, one may be able to arrange the atoms in order and rhythm and harmony. When you read, chant in groups, they often magnify the power of the atoms. And the zikr awakens the soul so as to preserve, pr produce, excuse me, both alertness and ecstasy. Mm, inshallah, may it be so. Now, I, um, I also says one other thing. So zikr may be called the finest thought expressed in the finest material form with the highest spiritual purpose. 
So zikr may be called the finest thought expressed in the finest material form with the highest spiritual purpose. And he says, it becomes the perfection of the sound uttered by the tongue, but not just our tongue. Our tongue is connecting to all the other tongues from far, far in the past and also in the future, and we're connecting with that vibration. So I don't need to tell you, you're all much more accomplished than I about music and the understanding of it, but you know this is the Rag Ravi, and it's the only rag, think of it, this is so significant to me at least, that is sung any time of day, any season, it's a universal raga. And Mersha put the zikr to this. And it so beautifully speaks to spiritual liberty and universal Sufism. I don't know if you know this, but it's called the Queen of Melodies. And the title implies a feminine quality. It's not Rajasic in any way. It's not uh, Jalali. It's more Jamali. Um, so anyway. Uh, it has a sobering atmosphere, but full of love, and hopefully it will elevate our consciousness and we'll be lifted to God. So inshallah. As I said, if something doesn't sound pretty to you, mute me, but keep your eyes open a little bit every once in a while to see when I stop talking or singing. All right. I'm using a shruti box. So that will be the sort of the humming sound you'll hear here. And I'll see if I can catch that zikr in the atmosphere. I'm just double checking you have your original sound for the Shruti box, right? Uh, let me see. Let me see here. Um, I thought I did. It's on, yes, it's on, yes. Is it too soft? Does it sound distorted? No, that's great. I just Okay, I kind of muted it a little bit because it's very loud and my voice is quite weak right now, but we, we will proceed and Mershid is here with us. La
Thank you, Masheda. Would you like to close us with a prayer? I can think of no better prayer than the Khatoum. And, you know, Murshid says of those prayers that our morning prayer is um, 
Jalal wakes us up and our noon dairy prayer is more Jamal. The sun is speaking and coming down, but he says of Khatum that each line, each line is a metaphysical reality. Think of that. So let's close with the Khatum, which is the evening prayer. O thou who art the perfection of love, harmony, and beauty, the Lord of heaven and earth, open our hearts that we may hear thy voice, which constantly cometh from within. Disclose to us thy divine light, which is hidden in our souls, that we may know and understand life better. Most merciful and compassionate God, give us thy great goodness. Teach us thy loving forgiveness. Raise us above the distinctions and differences which divide. And Mershit said, Amen. Send us the peace of thy divine spirit and unite us all in thy perfect being. I just want to send you all love and just being here just fills me with joy till I move to tears. So thank you so much for this opportunity to share. And I'm a big crybaby. <laughs> love you all. There's, it's all we need is love. We need more and more love, more and more love in this world. Thank you.